All right, welcome to the channel and to the Speedy Space Marine series. Today we're going to be tackling the largest legion of the Horus Heresy, the Lords of the 500 Worlds, the Sons of Rabute Gilliman. It can be none other than the Ultramarines. All of the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get into it. All right, so starting from a black primer, we're going to come in with some McCrag Blue. And we're essentially just overbrushing this across the model, ensuring that we get good coverage across all of the panels and get some nice saturated blues over the entire model. Now, whenever we're overbrushing, we're trying not to get it into the deepest of recesses here to leave separation between the components within the armor. Then gonna grab some Ultramarines blue. This is an older color. I'll drop the equivalent below in the description. We're gonna start to highlight up the armor. So we're going to hit all of the areas that the hobby likes hitting. So that's the top of the shoulders, top of the backpack, top of the head, top of the arms, outside of the legs. And we're using some light brush strokes here. So I'm holding the brush quite far back from the ferrule, applying minimal pressure to ensure I get nice smooth transitions through my dry brushing. I'm using a medium series D from Artisopus here to build up my highlights. Mixing in some rust gray, we're going to start to highlight those sections a bit more. So it's lighter pressure more directional strokes apart from on the shoulders where we want to create that nice rounded highlight to emphasize that spherical look but we're looking to build on all the volumetric shapes within the model starting to hit some edges and starting to create some definition within the armor so while you're doing this continue to use the dampener to ensure your brush stays moist and you get those nice soft gradients in your highlights now grabbing our extra small dry brush here, we're going to stipple in some highlights and some weathering. We're focusing around the edges of the plates where most of the damage would occur, but this also creates a nice strong edge highlight for us and creates more separation and definition within the components. Try to focus on the areas that are already highlighted just because it adds that additional higher value color in there and creates more contrast within your model. Then grabbing some Abaddon Black, we're going to paint in all of the rubberized sections of the model. This should generally only take one coat, sometimes it does take two, so just take your time with it. Try to avoid hitting any of those blue sections. I'm just coming in with a size 2 Series M here and just hitting all those sections, but if you need to use a smaller brush, by all means, grab yourself one. And then we're just going to apply the Abaddon Black over the bolter casing. Again, ensure you don't hit the hands or anything like that, but this can be done relatively quickly. Don't worry if you paint over the areas that are going to be silver. Grab any tubing or any wires or any details like that with the Abaddon Black too. So now just grab some exhaust manifold from Vallejo Metal Color or an equivalent silver paint and paint in all of the metallic sections. So that's the heatsink on top of the backpack, the exhausts, the strapping that goes across the chest and just any other details that you want to be silver. Again, take your time whenever you're doing this. It should generally only take one coat as well because this metallic paint covers super well but try not to hit any of those blue armor plates and then paint in all of the silver details on the gun. Next, grab yourself some Retributor armor. We're going to use this to do some of the accent details. So we're just going to apply this over the rivets on the shoulder. If there are any emblems or anything on your Marine, add that gold to those as well. Again, do your best not to hit any of the blue armor. I find it easiest just to sort of paint around the edges and paint in the top. Then with your bad and black, thin that down to a wash consistency. You could use null oil or your favorite black ink for this, but I just prefer to thin down a bad and black. So it means I can paint it over any of those sections that were already a bad and black without changing the finish. So I just slap it all over those silver areas to create separation and distinction within those areas and then just cover off the entire bolter.
grab some more fang brown and thin this down again into a wash consistency. You can use your favorite brown ink for this as well. I just really like the tone of more fang brown. I think it complements very nicely with the blue armor. So paint that into all of those rubberized sections as it just helps to create some separation and the indication of like dirt, grime, dust that's built up over the course of the battle. Apply it over the silver sections as well to give the impression of rust, dirt, grime, grease, anything that would build up over the course of the battle. And then just to add some additional warmth to those gold sections, just apply a quick wash over the top of those. Try not to let it settle too much over the blue armor. It does have a tendency to stain a wee bit. We're also going to use this as a recess shade just because it complements so nicely between those warm tones of the Mornfang Brown and the blues in the armor. It just helps to create extra depth and definition within the armor plates. Around the feet you can be a wee bit more liberal because we will be putting them on a desert base so it just helps to incorporate the model into the base. Then taking some corn red, we're going to apply this into the lenses and on top of the sensor on the head. Then grab some Evil Sun Scarlet and use this to highlight the sensor and the inner corner and lower edges of each lens. I'm still using the size 2 Series M here, but if you need to use a smaller brush for this, by all means, go ahead and grab one. Ensure you have a nice saturated coat over those areas so it might take two passes. Then using some Avalanche Sunset we're going to mix that with our Evil Sun Scarlet and just apply a highlight towards the inner corner of each lens. Then grab some Titanium White or your favourite white paint and thin that down so you can do a nice dot on your nail and then brace and do that into the rear of each lens. If you make any mistakes here just go back and paint over the lens or tidy it up. And once he's all put together, he should look a wee bit like this. I think this is a really cool representation of the Ultramarines. It kind of ties in a wee bit more of that grim, dark, battle-worn look that you don't normally see in their pristine armor. And once he's on the base, he looks even better. If you want to see how I made these bases, there'll be a link up in the top corner. Let's get him on the spinny thing and let's get a proper look. Those super saturated blues and bright colors really work so well with those deep washes of the Mornfang Brown. That complement of hot and cold colour just really elevates the scheme and makes it look more exciting and more dynamic. Again, including those red lenses just adds an additional pop colour to the marine. I can't wait to see your ultramarines on the tabletop. Hopefully you've enjoyed this process and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed project. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All the links can be found below in the description.